Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Releasing the Genius, where we interview extraordinary people and we try to discover how exactly did they get there. So this next person we have in is Devon Jones. And for over two decades, D Devon Jones has taught at Brookview Middle School and also in central capacity as a special project teacher at the Toronto District School Board. Working with some of Toronto's racialized and marginalized students at Brookview Middle School in the Jane and Finch area, Jones strives to show his students how to make smart choices, how to be civically engaged, and how to be part of the larger social fabric. That's great. His commitment to young people in area of Toronto that's been branded the most dangerous area to be a kid has extended beyond school boundaries and hours and has inspired thousands of young people. Jones was given an honorable mention in the Toronto Star Teacher of the Year Awards. In 2007, Jones co-founded the Youth Association for Academics, Athletics, and Character Education, also known as YACE or YAAACE, a social enterprise developed to help marginalized and poor youth through year-round comprehensive programming and activities, and now help, help 600 kids annually. The program was founded primarily to create a viable alternative to guns, drugs, and gangs. Devon Jones is an educator, community developer, and youth advocate, and his work has been highlighted in the Toronto Star, National Post, and the CBC. He currently resides in Toronto with his family. So thank you for joining us here, Devon. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Now, I, I just want to say a couple of things before you get going here. Okay. Okay. Because I, I think that the, the uh, everyone, the listeners, should know that first time I met Devon was over the phone, and um, what he has done, you may think, okay, he's done, he's created this and he's done that, and there's lots of people who have done different community um, initiatives, but you have, first of all have to understand where it was. And that huge, um, you know, jump to be able to take something from one of one of the most marginalized areas in Toronto, which is huge, mm -hmm. um, and and not not look at that as a problem, but as an opportunity for mm -hmm. one. The other thing about Devon is that it's always about the kids. It has never been about him. And um, at, at, for our listeners, I, I just want you to really get that sense about him. It's it's um, and because of that, he has been able to be very successful, effective, and um, be able to develop a program that has developed some of the top kids in our nation. And I think, and, and it's not just is he looking for the top kids, but he's also looked at how do we deal with a major problem and make it something good like turn it around so that we've got something good. So um, this is really exciting having you here today. I'm really excited about um, just hearing more about you as a person as well. But before I talk too much, let's get to you. Can you please tell people what is this program? What, um, what, how, why did you start it? And what is it doing in this, in this area of Toronto? Um, and I think afterwards we'll talk about a little bit more about you and also where this program is going. All right, okay. sounds good. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Kim. Thank you, Nathan, for, uh, for having me. Um, yeah, from uh, from teaching school in Jane and Finch um, for close to 20 years. Um, over that time, I realized that there were huge issues around attrition. You know, kids from that neighborhood, but they were pretty much on the periphery. They were at the margins looking in. And I've always thought, how can we change that dynamic? Like, how can we create a constructive ecosystem where children and youth saw themselves as part of the larger social fabric. Because when young people are, when they're hopeless, when they feel they don't belong, they create alternative realities that they force us as a society to deal with. And oftentimes we see that stuff play out on the cover of the Toronto Star mm. in the most hideous of ways. Mm -hmm or the most compromising of, 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 uh, of, of social mores or expectations. And we ask ourselves, how could that be? But those are kids that were left of their own demise. So in creating a program, I ask, herself, I ask myself, like, what major social issue am I trying to address? And then how do I go about doing that? 
And it was moving kids from the periphery to center in one of the most compromised, vulnerable communities in this country. So what did you do? Like, what does this look like? Yeah, so the, the, the operational framework was this, mm-hmm. when, I, when I framed this. It was outreach and wraparound. What do you mean by outreach Out, and wraparound? Outreach, <laughs> outreach, there are four pillars. So yeah. outreach meant I would really make it a point to find young people, uh, children that were vulnerable, and uh, we'd provide outreach to them, right? Um, wraparound support means that you are as comprehensive as any nauseam that would compromise that child. So you're always there. One thing I've learned from doing frontline work, you can't turn your neck for a second because they're going to lose that child because the, 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 that vice is more so tangible and it's more so ta- uh, it, it tantalizing mm-hmm. to that child. It's there. It's a it's, it's hundred bucks. Bring that over there for me. It's... Uh, it's a, a pair of hair Jordans. It's tangible. It's present. So yes. you have to be as present, you know, you know, and and you're 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 pretty much providing something different, something that's long term, that a child might not realize is so much more into his or her best interest. And trust. You're building trust. A hundred percent trust. Yeah. You know. So outreach and wrap around. Um, the next piece was just you know access to expanded opportunities. You know, what were some of the what are some of these what are some of these things that a young person don't always have access to? So one of the things I find um, that produce some of the top people in the world mm-hmm. is that access. Yeah. Um, we talk about access just to education in some cases, mm-hmm. but this is even more than that because education provides you with so much. Yeah. But you're saying access, because these kids all have yep. a- access to education, mm-hmm. like as a day, day yeah. school. Mm-hmm. But what you're providing them access to is something else that allows them to go from here up to here. What for, is it that you provide access to? For sure. To? So, yeah. so the education piece, I slot into academic intervention. The piece around expanded opportunities or, for example, I just left, I just left you know, a, a gym with, with um, with about twenty young people in it, you know, you know, four coaches. There may be eight young people that we hired as staff that's in the gym, working, um, you know. And then I met with someone around starting an arts program. Um, you know, two very creative, two of the most creative people I've ever met. Hmm. You know, and I have a great contact at Sony, and we're talking about creating a project similar to the Remix project. Or fresh arts who create who p- created so many iconic people in the city, as it relates to the arts. So it's cr- giving kids stuff they wouldn't normally have access to because of a price point, or because of being accessible. It's not accessible to them. It's making it accessible, you know. So um, and in in doing that, I look at the number of successful young people of the program, like. A kid like O'Shea Brissett that plays for the Raptors, or his brother Dejan Brissett uh, that was just drafted second by the Argos. You know, kids like Nikhil Alexander uh, that plays for the Pelican, for the Pelicans, or Justin Jackson who I just left in the gym. Just imagine you're in a gym, you're in grade seven, and there's a guy across the gym who's an NBA player. Wow. Who's there working out. So, yeah, so it's role and, ma- models and letting them know that th- it's actually not something far in distance. It's it's right there and relatable. It's tangible. Yeah. And just imagine when Justin was in that same position <laughs> when he, wa- he was with me when he was um, in grade four. Hmm. You know? So, so, yeah, so, I, 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 I'd Mike, I, I was a goalie in hockey and I'd Mike Fisher. Um, he was a su- very successful hockey player, I realized right after, because yeah. he, he left a bruise on my arm. Okay. I, 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 I wouldn't let him score, so he started shooting harder. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. That's, yeah. That's not cool. Wow. But you know what? That you Mike don't... Fisher. <laughs> well, I, I got better equipment after. Okay. So. <laughs> Mom, look. I didn't <laughs> 
Um, I I think what you've done, though, is what you're saying is that these people are accessible. Yeah. You know, the the top of the world, basically, is what you're talking about to come. And they they will work with kids. A hundred percent. And you just have to reach out. Is that what, like, because this is That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying, like, you know, uh, all the kids I mentioned, Osho was with me when he was in grade five. Mm -hmm. He's no Toronto Raptor. Can Just you tell tell the world what, what a Toronto Raptor is? Because some yeah, of the okay. world may not, yeah, they but, may well, know, but let's yeah, just well, make the, sure. Well, the Toronto we Raptor is a professional <laughs> basketball team in Toronto, and they're the world champions. Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Only Canadian champions. team. We won. The city went crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know. So That's this, right. uh, this, this, And so this kid came to your program. This, for me, for me, was five, for me, was in grade five. Yeah. So, I mean, the chance of you playing professional basketball is one in maybe two million and this so, young man was fortunate is fortunate enough to be one of those kids so what what you've done i i wanted to talk about you but before we do that because yeah. this is really interesting mm. you not only brought him up there's other people in other areas that of you've course, done of course. so like you just basically bounce them from being you know sort of in the average level to yeah. boom of right course. to the top and you didn't even have room it went right to the top but it's not just one or two you actually if i look at the number of kids you're working with mm-hmm. and the number who actually reached up there i mean that percentage seems extremely high yeah you know so what, what did you do you know what? because i think it's micromanaging a, a young person's trajectory you know, and I look at I look at very successful people that I've had as mentors. For example, speaking of hockey, Carl Subban oh, was my yeah. principal for five years. Really? At, at Brookview, yeah. He was my boss. So PK Subban. PK Subban, George. He's a funny be, guy. <laughs> would, be, would be in that building. You know, like yeah, Malcolm, like I like but I saw I saw that I saw a father's dedication. Yeah. I saw a father's attention to de- and as I was a young father myself at the time, I saw a father's attention to details. Right? I saw how the success of a young person was left to chance. Every aspect of that child's day was planned strategically. So as a parent I embodied that 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 mindset and as a teacher and as a mentor that was also my mindset the kids at yes like for example the caretakers was very upset at me when we walked into 45 north Ridge yesterday it's not safe i said listen you're we're paying for this permit and at the end of the day i want to make sure i can touch and feel the well-being of each of these Eight children in my program this summer. I haven't seen them since March. Mm. You know, so I mean, to have them go awry for 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 four, five, six months without any meaningful interaction, especially for the demographic of kids we're talking about, that's way too long. So if I can really engage them for for a couple months, uh, for the eight weeks, who knows what's going to transpire in October, September, October, November. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, like you might be you might be inconvenienced as a caretaker and the fact is the kids we clean the building you have to do nothing but open the door and it's an issue but people don't understand that so when I program I always programmed year round I always ensure that nothing was left to chance I knew where these kids were all the time you know like uh, we might be a week in Christmas or uh, maybe a week at the end of summer camp but those kids were in our buildings at all times. So it's more than just sports. Yeah, it's more than you're, just sports. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a lot of education. A lot of education. I mean, the third <clears throat> pillar, the third, the first pillar was, um, you know, the third pillar is um, academic intervention. The first, the, uh, the first pillar, the first pillar was um, at, was wraparound support. Yes. Yeah. You know, and then you know, and you expand that- opportunities. No academic intervention, mm-hmm. like you know, and that's the weekend program. You know, that's the evening program. That's my staff going into schools to support struggling students. So you might have a, 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 a young person who has lost a parent or a parent is incarcerated or something like that. And 
I have a, we have staff that really addresses and micromanage um, the student's trajectory at our point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's making sure that we know what's happened. Nothing's left a chance. You, so you take each life seriously. Extremely. And therefore, they know that because you're taking it seriously, that they should be taking their lives seriously. For sure, for sure. And not in, in, in chance. No delusions. Yeah. You're, you're saying, here's the facts, let's look after mm-hmm. you and show them how to be successful yeah. by living a life of success. Yeah. So um, that's, oh, like, you know, people may say, okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of nice. But you know what? Not many people are capable of doing that. Um, in terms of adding on, not just you are successful as a father, you're just telling me about your son. And Mm -hmm. do you want to just tell everyone a little bit about your son, what they're doing? You can, you can sort of go on about your son a little bit and I'm going to go on about you. (laughs) Okay. So tell us a little bit about him. You know, well, my, yeah, my son, well, my, my son plays, um, you know, great student, you know, he plays the piano, he plays baseball. He's one of the top, um, top prospect in this country for baseball. My daughter plays, um, tennis. Um, you know, she is, uh, she lost in the semis this weekend. Usually, oh, no. you know, she, and, and, but she's playing against, you know, she's 10, she's 10 years old playing a gir- against girls who are 12 U. Oh, okay. So yeah. That's, yeah. That's, 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 that's a that's big difference. Of, well, yeah. It's yeah. A huge difference. Like usually a couple of days on a Saturday we go home, but she made it through to Sunday. <laughs> oh, <know>? wow. <laughs> you know, you know, she was, I mean, Good she's on court maybe, maybe four to five hours a day. So how do you keep them focused like this? What sort of things do you say to them? What, what is it that, that allows that, you know, oh, it's not too much work, but they want to keep going, all these kids? You, you know what? I, I, tell, I tell each and every single young person I work with, be the best. Just be the best. You know, I tell... As it relates to sports, I say, listen, be an, be an apex predator. There can't be no one above you. That's what you strive for. You know, that's what you commit to. Anything you do in life, you have to be the absolute best at it. And if you're not going to be the best at it, then don't do it. If your mindset isn't, if you, if you aren't wired to be the absolute, if you're not wired to be the best, when I coach basketball, I told my kids all the time, it's just about perfection. And perfection by perfection, I mean the best that you can do. We leave nothing on the table. And yeah, the best I, you can do. The best yeah, you can that's do. very that's big. Yeah, it, and right? That's the individual Difference. genius yeah. in each yeah, person. Yeah. Oh. And you'll find it yeah. if you're right. trying the best that's, all the time. That's right. Yeah. And, and it's, all, you know, it's all positive affirmation. It's, it's just demanding that they're the best. Now that's interesting. You're demanding. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about you yeah. growing up. Yeah. What was your life like? What were you like as a kid? Let's just talk about you as a small child. Were you like one of these kids <laughs> who were demanding of others all the time when you're you, little? <laughs> you, 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 you know what? Like I, I look at, you know, I look at I look at my my middle son sometimes, and I see, like I have three children. My oldest is 22, but like, they're all so different. I look at my daughter and she's just a consummate perfectionist. Does everything well, has to, everything has to be perfect. Instructions are given once, followed. I look at my middle son and it's like, I'm telling you again, <laughs> again. And, and I think that was, that was me. Okay. <laughs> I think that was me, right? I had to be reminded of things to, you know, do things a particular way, duck up corners and all that. But, um, Growing up, I grew up in in very very rural Jamaica. So, what was it like? Um, looking now, looking back, I'm like, damn, we were poor. <laughs> you know, like looking back, I'm like, man, like we had so little. Yeah. You know, but I was raised in a home with a lot of love. I was raised in a home with extremely high expectations, high high expectations. Like in that home, nothing less. Like perfection is the best. I said earlier, the best I could do. No, in that in that house, perfection was perfection. Hundred percent like, on every 100%, grade. Hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't, man, you'd hear about it. 
Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, I, I'm reading a book right now called Abundance. And um, okay. one of the, the chapters talks about perhaps, well, not perhaps, they're saying that success in our future will be about having less, not more. Mm -hmm. And therefore, a shifting of some of our priorities. And you're just talking about that. You didn't need all these things because mm -hmm. you were poor. So you didn't mm -hmm. have all the material mm -hmm. things. But yet it sounds like you were rich. Um, at least what was given to you was mm. rich in understanding, rich mm -hmm. in who you are as a person. And that's the richness that that's to be valued. And if you've got that, you can do almost anything in the world. Oh, you, I, and I believe that. Like, it was just this innate work ethic. Yes. This innate work ethic and this innate desire to just be the best. Like... So, you know, and, and and you know what? It's it's it is such it is such a value to pass on to others as a leader, as a teacher, as a mentor. Like it's such a value to disseminate and to watch young people. Like like I'm trying to con convince a young person um, that I want her. You know, I was really bright. And, um, you know, didn't finish her, her undergrad. And I'm like, listen, listen. So I call her doctor, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like I call her Dr. Johnson because I'm telling her you are going to get that PhD, you know. So um, we spoke about the Global Mail earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a particular publication that was very, very um, uh, disturbing to all of us. And I'm like, yeah, but do something about it. Right, you know, they're right in that because there isn't a counter narrative. You be the counter narrative. That's, you know, yes. that's right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you be the you be that alternative voice, and and you'll see that that it's important for others to be able to hear from you as opposed to have someone tell our story. You are the one that should be overseeing this narrative. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, like what, what you're doing with the kids, too, is being a role model mm -hmm. and, um, and showing them this is what it looks like so they understand this is what it looks like to be a perfectionist or not necessarily be a perfectionist mm -hmm. for, for in a good way. This is what it means to strive for this perfectionism. Yeah. Um, and, and also, it's a role model as to the success so they can see mm -hmm. not only what does it look like when you're pursuing it, but also what it looks like to be there. Yeah. So I, I um, as a teenager, were you that way as well? Did people, like, did, did you start things in, in high school? Did you, or you just like a kid who just went through high school? Yeah, you, you know what? I was, I was very driven I was very driven to be good at things. You know, I was very, for example, I played sports, played basketball, very driven to be good at it. Didn't have, hadn't no opportunity at all. But in a short period of time, like I really drove myself to be like extremely good at it with almost a professional skill set. Um, you know, self-taught, but ordered videos online, mm -hmm. like like. So no yeah. excuses. No excuses. Like I I I did do ridiculous. Put my body through ridiculous, um, you know, physical, uh, uh, you know, physically demanding things that made me this exceptional athlete. That you know, people thought, oh my God, it's so easy. You know, you had no idea what, what I did this morning at five o'clock. You should have seen those forty six steers that I ran. You know, but I would never tell them. I, I never told them what I do. You know, I, I I just never told my secrets. I just secret sauce. It's secret sauce. Man. <laughs> secret sauce. You know and, what I'm and saying? It's tough. Yeah, and, and, and as and as sauce a, stays forever. Yeah, and even that, as a student, it was like it was learning. I had to learn pretty much. You know, I remember my last year in high school, and it was like okay, um, university. Oh shoot! And then I had to change my circle of friends, and I'm like, how do you get nineties? Yes. Oh, that's how you get 90s. Oh, you're home studying every night for three and a half, four hours. Yeah. So yeah. that's how you get 90s. Okay. So once I understood that, that it was just this work ethic and applying yourself and this attention to, to, 
uh, to details that the smart kids weren't born instinctively smart. They really studied and applied themselves. And that's why they got the grades that they got. Yeah, they were driven for a goal at the end. It, for sure. it's, yeah, it's even right now with um, the work ethic I, I yeah. see between different friends. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's almost like different friend groups at, mm-hmm. at this point. But the ones that are trying to move things really quickly, mm. they're working till midnight, no problem. And, but they're not tired because they love it. Yeah. So it's not, oh, I have to work till midnight. It's okay. I get to do what I like, and I can see this goal coming. So it's For sure. Yeah, other people, if they're being forced to work till midnight, they're going to be exhausted ex- sure. because they they don't want to be there. For sure. Yeah. You know, we often we get a lot of very bright kids in our school in mm-hmm. Spirit of Math, and many of them are gifted, extremely gifted, mm-hmm. and. Um, but yet we also get other kids who aren't classified as mm-hmm. gifted and they yeah, come yeah. in and sometimes we've had some who are quite like relatively weak, but they put the effort in, they have mm-hmm. the motivation and they work at it, work at it, work at it, work at it. And they outperform those who are naturally gifted. Yeah. And I think wow. that's what you've just that's, said. That's too. incredible. And, and it's consistently happening like wow. that. So it's, um, it really does come down to that and the plasticity of the brain, but I think also our muscles. There's yeah. a lot involved in all of this. Um, yeah. Now, I, I'm just wondering, because I'm, I'm really curious. I don't want to run out of time here, yeah. and I think there's something that I, I'm, I'm curious about, and that is in this program that mm-hmm. you've got, you've been able to produce in the top in the world, basically, mm-hmm. and I would say you have done that. You've mm-hmm. allowed them. You've basically brought out that genius in them. And at the same time, you've got, um, you, know, you know, a dichotomy because you've got these kids who are so challenged with just living life mm-hmm. and not getting into another trap, which mm-hmm. we talked about being one of, you know, the biggest traps you can get in, mm-hmm. in this world, really, mm-hmm. is making up your own other reality yeah. and um, getting into, you know, trouble basically you know in one way or another and and so you've got these two things that you're you're working with mm-hmm. how do you work with that like how do you deal with that what what do, you, what do you do to sort of pull it all together so that everyone's working together and there isn't a differentiator yeah and and that's that is that is a very that that is a very i mean you use the word dichotomy and you couldn't use a word that is that is more so precise. Um, for example, um, I requested permit space for my programming, and the school board secured space for me at Driftwood, Jaden Driftwood. The fact is that I can't go to that place based on the fact that there is an impending issue around violence. Oh. Mm. So. The incidents are so random and so indiscriminate that a young person could be one of my staff going to work that could get could meet their demise that day, could get shot that day. It could be one of my the kids of my the young men working for me. It could be one of my teachers. And based on the current climate and the number of homicides, I'm like, I cannot in good conscience utilize that space. Because I'm putting people's life at risk. Yes. And yeah. they don't they don't understand that. So the kids that I work with, think about a child from that neighborhood who works in that neighborhood. They have to navigate that dichotomy each and every single day. Yeah. They have to navigate that reality each yes. and every single yeah. day. And the other end of the dichotomy for them is here is is that I have to meet you you you're navigating your mortality, but I'm asking you to meet real world expectation. You know, that is a dichotomy. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yes. That is a dichotomy. But, well, <laughs> you, know? you know, and it, and it helps, I would say that when they come out, like as they grow up, um, they have a much broader understanding of the world. Yeah. They get, um, you, you're also telling them that their lives are very important mm-hmm. and that this isn't right, that they should have to do this. So yeah. even by you saying this isn't, safe to be here you are actually in fact saying well this is this is not good even though you have to navigate it it's still not good that you're navigating it of course and and kids need to understand that it's not a norm or it shouldn't be a norm let's put it that way for some people it is a norm but it shouldn't be it can be and yes because the the problem is that 
a lot of young people have accepted that subculture mm-hmm. as the they've accepted that pathology as the norm. Mm-hmm. Well, adults will you do know? that too. Yeah, yes. they've accepted that. You are, yeah. and 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 they present the most depraved, the most dangerous element in our society because. We've pretty much, and it's not, they didn't create, they inherited those realities, you know, and they're forced to absorb those norms and they have accepted them and they're operating within those perimeters and the pathology inherent yeah. in, those, uh, in those perimeters, my goodness, like, I, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have me. I've worked in um, inner city schools. I don't know what else to mm-hmm. call them, where there is yeah. this happening in, in high schools mm-hmm. and having to work with the kids with this. And I I think one of the the keys that you've got is that you've got you, you've given them the belief in themselves yeah. that they've got something much more. Mm-hmm. I think also the fact that you're taking away delusions from them. That's this right. isn't right. Yeah. And facing the facts, I know the top of the world they they say world class people mm-hmm. are able to do that. They yeah. are able to to differentiate subjective reality and objective reality, mm-hmm. and so when you're you're basically saying no, that's a subjective reality, that mm-hmm. that's the norm. This is the objective reality, and then somehow, and I don't know what your secret is, secret sauce mm-hmm. is, but I, I think there should be you know people around the world. If you're trying to do something like this, mm-hmm. I think you should reach out to Devon because he has been able to connect them with world class thinkers, mm-hmm. world class doers, mm-hmm. and. And, um, and and shift this thinking for a whole community basically is what you're for doing. Sure. Yeah. How and, can people follow follow your stories? Yeah. And, and before I say that, don't get me wrong, we do have attrition. We do have young people that you're like, you know. I ask I ask the question mm-hmm. when I see a young people that a young person or young people that's compromised. It's not what's wrong with you. It's what what happened to you. Mm. And I really try and make sense of that mm-hmm. I really try and make sense of the trajectory that has led to that outcome the undesirable outcome mm-hmm. right so there's been a lot of young people in the program for example I have a team with with um, uh, maybe uh, seven college graduates an NBA player on it and one one young man who lost his life at 15 and another that was charged with murder at nine year old uh, sorry at 19 years old mm-hmm. oh. you know as a gifted student. So, you know what I'm saying? So you have, again, on, the, on that team, we have that dichotomy, you know? So um, despite the fact that we have success, we also have some yeah. attrition. We've, um, I'm always asking, like, you know, I said to one of my staff this morning, yes, we're good at what we do, but we're not, we're not, we're not the best. And we're not, the, we're not our better selves. And we can do better. And we need to do better. Because so you want perfection. We want perfection. We want to make sure that we're not losing kids to the streets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not losing kids to incarceration. Or, yeah. you know, uh, uh, kids are not, um, they don't end up being gun toting. Um, this, this is very, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. is, um, you know, the, the teenage years with that frontal lobe growing, yeah. their logic is kind of kooky. And if they're, if they've got the different people, mm-hmm. um, in their lives who, that are convincing them of mm-hmm. this reasoning that this is the truth, that this reasoning is right. Um, they don't have the ability, they're learning that ability to reason because that's yeah. the frontal lobe, yeah. right? And um, and so giving them that opportunity to be with others, to reason properly, mm-hmm. to um, but it's still tough. They go home, they and go home. or they go. Maybe they don't go home. Maybe they go somewhere else, and then that influence is That's so right. strong. And in, at the teenage years, it's it's tough. It's tough. You I know what? It's... They go home to those depraved communities, you know, and but, it's no knock on the communities, but. But they go home to those very compromising realities. That's, and and yes. I did it with a group of young people. Um, I spent 90, I did a project with the feds and we spent 96 weekends with a group of young men. And it was, it was transformational for me to see how different they were outside of that environment. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Really? To see children act like children then when they get back in that neighborhood, they revert back 
to the expectation of the peer group of yes. the subculture and what it took to survive in that in that hmm. in that reality yeah and it was i mean it was a very unique project for me i'm gonna write a book on that project actually because we've had we've had young persons in that project who have done extremely well that would um, be great for you to write that yeah, book because yes. i think people can learn from you and oh, i sure. I'm, I'm not yeah i'm just yeah seeking. especially around the world as well because um, yes. a, a lot of times they think that everything is sunshine and rainbows in in canada mm. um, but it's okay well not not fully but at least let's share what we've gone through and, and our knowledge is and how it could possibly help other communities too yeah yeah. Yeah, there are sure. communities all around the world who have the same challenges no matter where we are and sure. I think though that you've found this uh you've got a bit of a secret sauce mm -hmm. and um and you said secrets one of your mm -hmm. secrets was getting up at 5:30 in the morning yes, and, yes, and actually yes, doing it. Yep. And the other secret is not to complain about it and say to everyone, "Oh, I was up at 5:30 in the mm -hmm. morning. I did this, I did this." Mm -hmm. That's not the winner's, mm -hmm. you know, no. mentality. It's so the same. I know you didn't do that. <laughs> that's right you didn't do that that's right and it's not about that's the right. other people it's not about yeah. you know showing yourself as better yeah, it's right. about just doing your best that's that you right can be. that's right yeah. 100 percent. so how can they look you up what can they do so that they can find out because i think this is amazing i think people would love to reach out to you to find out what you're doing how you're doing it so that you know all our listeners if you've got an initiative like you that you would like to do like this. I know I was just speaking to uh, Fibio Atala in, in Uganda, and mm -hmm. she's you know saying the same issues. It's slightly different mm -hmm. in Uganda. Um, it, it is different, but uh, it still is comes down to this whole idea that you need to recreate almost a community for them mm -hmm. of a reality that is a shift from what mm -hmm. they their other community is but how can they get hold of you so that they can find yeah you? on ig or twitter it's yes y triple a c e that's y a a a c e um underscore s i so it's yes underscore s i um on instagram and twitter or on our website at www.yes y a a a c e dot com yeah, we'll put those in the description yeah, so sure. it can just get hyperlinked right away. Perfect. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. okay. Well, yeah, it's on your chest there. It's on yeah. my chest. It's yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think I, I just want to ask you one more question because our, our time is coming to the end. Yeah. This has been really fascinating. It would be lovely to sort of dig down more and, with other conversations, and we definitely will have some other conversations. I just think, you know, if you can give one thought out there, your, your genius has mm -hmm. been released mm -hmm. in what you're doing. You figured out, it's not necessarily whether you figured it out, you just evolved mm -hmm. into what your, your, your genius has yeah. been to do this. Yeah. What would you give to the kids out there or even to other adults? What, what allowed you to figure this out or what would you say to them so that they, their genius can also be realized? I like, I like what you said. Like we just, we just evolved into this. And as it relates to programming, we continue to evolve to be our better selves. But I'll say to each and every single young person out there, you are, you are capable of being anything you want to be. So whatever it is you want to be, you are very capable and you can do it. The question then becomes, what, what's the action plan to ensure that you're successful? Like, how are you going to become successful? This is this has been absolutely amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. I um I think if I I go back and what I'm I'm learning from from you, mm -hmm. and uh, is and I'm hearing from you over and over again. It's believe in yourself mm -hmm. and be ready to commit to what it takes. That's right. To be at that level right. to release your mm -hmm. genius. That's right. And uh, and it does take something. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. That it takes a lot of effort. Of course. Yeah. And that's of part of the fun, as Nathan was sort of saying before, is you enjoy it. Yeah. If that's you right. enjoy it, it's not work. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And don't look at it as effort as a bad thing. That's it's right. a great thing. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Thank so thanks, so Devon. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Appreciate this. This right. has been great. Thank, Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Cool.
So thank you, everybody, all, all our listeners. And, uh, and again, you can find out how to reach Devon and just amazing stories. And once again, releasing the genius in our world and allowing other people to release the genius. Yeah, amazing. we'll put the links for Yace uh, everywhere so you can connect with him. Um, I know that there was, other, there was people reaching out to us after our episode with um, Phoebe from Uganda saying, how can we duplicate something? How can we support over there? Um, I think that we're starting to make some matches. So, right. so Great. yeah. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, take care, everybody.